but that's a whole right. tangent right. that one could go down. Because um, <laughs> I still do want to sort of round off uh, Shingus Khan. Um, you, yes. you make a great analogy to what he would be in America, right? Just to sort of uh, picture his empire a different way. So he conquered twice as much as many other men in history. And he occupied lands combined larger than the continent of Africa, which alone is just unbelievably huge. Um, you say this equivalent, and I've taken it here uh, without the direct quote, so I'm sorry that I'm going to butcher this quote, but um, it's an equivalent as if an enslaved person in America liberated themselves, unified the people, went on through sheer force of charisma and competency to create an alphabet, write a constitution, create freedom of religion, invent a new warfare system, and then march an army all the way from Canada down to Brazil with the entire range unified, trade liberated in between. It's like that was such a great way to, um, to picture what this man actually did and what his empire actually looked like because uh, it seems quite comparable to what he did in the entire step of Europe and then into Asia. Well, oh, thank you. Uh, well, I, I liked your summary of that. And since I don't remember my own exact words <laughs> uh, at all, I'm going to wish that those are my exact words and uh, I will claim what you said as my, my words. But uh, I do remember writing that, but I don't remember all the details exactly mm -hmm. as you said it. But yes, that's true. He was enslaved as a child, and then uh, he went on to do all of these things that you mentioned. And, you know, I, everybody, anybody who's watching you for five minutes knows I am totally biased. <laughs> this issue. I don't claim to be. I'm not trying to be the objective scholar who's, sure. well, on the one hand, and on the, you know. No, you have a soft no, spot no, no. for Genghis. But I, but I'm biased because I didn't come to it that way. I mean, it's something that developed over time, and it is based on everything I know and everything I believe. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's just, but I, I am biased towards Chinggis Khan. I don't see anybody in the history of the world mm -hmm. like him. I see, you know, somebody like, you take Napoleon, or you can take uh, Julius Caesar. I mean, first of all, they came to a literate society. They didn't have to invent an alphabet for them. They didn't have to give them that. They came to a place with written laws. They didn't have to give them that. Uh, they were not slaves, even though uh, Napoleon was a low class person and started off as a corporal in the army. He was not a slave. He did not start at the bottom. He was a literate person. I mean, he had all of these guys had great advantages. Alexander the Great. Oh, we hold him up as the greatest conqueror. Oh, my. God. Oh, Alexander the Great. Oh, well, yeah. Well, first. First of all, his teacher was Aristotle. That's a good start in life. Yeah. His father was a king. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you start off with your father's a king and your teacher is Aristotle, you have a couple of advantages going for you. And he conquered an empire that was perhaps one fourth or one third the size of what Chinggis Khan conquered. And the day Alexander died, that empire died. Mm -hmm. He never united it, he never issued a set of laws. It was divided up among his generals who were so disloyal to him and to his family. Mm, that's such a good point he, as well. He, the, the fact yeah, that the empire and, died with him and Khans lived on. Yes, mm. for another hundred mm. years. And then it broke apart and parts lived on for a while. Uh, so we can look at Alexander the Great and we can, and actually I actually have to like Alexander the Great. Yeah, me as well. I do like him. <laughs> Great and, character. And, and we could. You know, we could look at, oh, yes, it carried a Greek art went here and Greek art went there. But what country learned written literacy from him for the first time? Literacy was already there. These countries had literacy. These countries had written laws. These countries had all of those things. He didn't change that. He didn't change it. And so the influence of Alexander the Great's empire would blow it up. But it was really quite small. Mm -hmm beyond a few very specific things. And the influence of Chinggis Khan was great on the, on the diplomatic scene, on diplomacy, the, uh, the protection of ambassadors and, uh, and uh, diplomatic immunity, on his laws of religious freedom, on all of these things, on the economy, every aspect of commerce. He raised the status of merchants wherever he went. 
and left them at a much higher position. So he changed the world in ways that we still benefit from today. That's why I, I call it the making of the modern world. Mm -hmm. Much of our modern world. You can even look at the map today. The Mongols pushed together these different parts of China that had not been united for centuries. They pushed together the different rival kingdoms of Korea. They pushed together. Russia had never been mm -hmm. united. Never. Ukraine had been the greatest. They pushed it all together. You look at the map of the world today, a map of Eurasia. Much of it was made by Chinggis Han. Much of mm -hmm. it. This influence is there. We just don't see it because we don't look for it. And you usually don't find what you don't look for. Mm -hmm. I think that might be a good way to round out Genghis Khan uh, telling his story. Okay. I think that's a great place to leave it on because there is other stuff you could mention, obviously. Uh, when I initially reached out to you, I mentioned the chapter on the plague and the Mongols' role in that mm -hmm. is like, it's 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 history altering altering and it and it really is amazing and then obviously we can you know like his childhood for instance uh, the role that his mother played the fact that he killed his own half brother uh you know the man the man has so many details in his life but i think one shouldn't uh release at all because there is absolutely nothing better than the original text itself and so that should be the next book any person listening mm. to this decides to purchase because it is <laughs> just um it's a it's it's a biography of a man, definitely. But what it is more is just a brilliant snapshot of uh, one story from history. And that's the Mongol story and the way it influenced the world. Um, 